Business Development, Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs, Mrs. Sophia Alfie Henry, Mr. Michael Williams, Advisor to the Prime Minister, Mr. Peter Lord, Chairman of the Standards Council, Members of the Standards Council, Past Chairs of the Standards Council, Past Directors of SLBS, Representatives of the CARICOM Regional Organization for Standards and Quality, Chairpersons of our Technical Committees, Heads of Department, Staff of the St. Richard Bureau of Standards, Members of the Media and other invited guests, good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome everyone to the commemoration of the 33rd anniversary of the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. Uh, many of you know that SLBS is our national standards body. We are also the National Metrology Institute and the National Legal Metrology Institute. SLBS currently chairs the CARICOM Regional Organization for Standards and Quality and is a member of the Pan American Standards Commission, the Inter-American System for Metrology, SIM. We are a full member of ISO. We are a corresponding member of the OIML. We are the World Trade Organization Technical Barriers to Trade Enquiry Point. We are the Codex Alimentarius Focal Point. And we are an MOU partner with the American Society of Testing Materials, the STM International. SLBS is also the Caribbean point of focus for the Commonwealth Standards Network. Today we will highlight some of the important aspects of the work of SLBS, which involves the implementation of the National Quality Policy, which guides the development of St. Lucia's pathway to economic recovery. The NQP is designed to address short and long-term needs, which will provide the appropriate mechanisms for local enterprises, including SMEs, to access local, regional and global markets while also ensuring human and human animal health plant health and the safety and protection of the environment slbs has recently revised the nqp post pandemic to incorporate some of the critical lessons learned which will ensure all sectors of our economy are adequately addressed by our quality infrastructure some of those recent interventions include projects on packaging and labeling assistance to the Ministry of Infrastructure on, a, on the development of a pathway to accreditation to ISO 17025 for the materials testing lab with a specific scope of concrete, asphalt and soils testing. With the aid of the Commonwealth Standards Network, St. Lucia augmented its standards portfolio by 150%, adopting standards linked to the SDGs and national priorities which serve as critical tools in ensuring congruent ecosystems aimed at enhancing national development and mitigating environmental impacts. This has strengthened St. Lucia's ability to demonstrate the, and the use of and conformity to international standards, which will significantly improve our suite of demand-driven quality products for export. It is our vision that St. Lucia's business and government agencies will continue to utilize the elements of the, the elements to optimize production and quality, and in so doing, boost the economy while improving the quality of life of our people. SLBS continues to advance the development of a sustainable cannabis regulatory framework and associated industry for the adoption of sta cannabis standards. In addition, we have been intensely engaged in work with the International Atomic Energy Agency to adhere to the Code of Conduct for Radiation Safety and Nuclear Security. Our efforts in the areas of energy efficiency continue with a series of standards related to energy efficiency and the recently concluded CROSQ sponsored pilot program for energy efficiency labeling of refrigerators and air conditioned units and the implementation of the regional or the CARICOM regional energy efficiency building code. The SLBS continues to protect consumers from deceptive practices through import monitoring, market surveillance, the verification of measuring and weighing instruments, and verification of price controlled items such as bread and fuel. SLBS is committed to fulfilling its mandate through the accreditation of our regulatory systems, such as accreditation to ISO 17025, accreditation to ISO 17020 for our inspection processes, and recertification to ISO 9001. I would like to thank the staff and all our volunteers and Standards Council members who've worked diligently to make 
SLBS, a Sterling Institution of Excellence. With these words, I welcome you to the celebrations as we will take you through a, seri a series of specific interventions that we've done throughout the years, including recent work with the 11th EDF. At this time, I'd also like to welcome our chairman to bring some brief remarks. Um, I had a prepared speech, and it was good stuff, you know, cool hard facts about uh, SLBS. And as I, as I read it and reread it and so on, um, I started thinking of all the changes that took place since I came in contact with SLBS some 30-something years ago. And all the people who passed through SLBS and all the things that happened and so on. And I thought that um, it might be more interesting to just tell stories of how we went along that journey, you know? And uh, because no, no journey of 33 years doesn't have these stories, you know? Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about, you know, how we got here, why we keep going, where we are going to, and more importantly, who shared the journey with us, past and present. I will not endeavor to name names because I might forget some people, and that ain't going to be fair. Um, so here we go. St. Lucia, some 30-something years ago, had a cozy little relationship with the British, a little carve out for his bananas. It's us it's it's and it's and the Windward Islands. And uh, things were so nice that they called bananas green gold. Yeah. Um, it was one of those unique things that the dollar penetrated right throughout the economy. Things were rosy. Things were moving. But uh, certain powers that be in the world, you thought it was wrong. In fact, they thought it was so egregious that they had to use their economic might to mash that up. Never mind that the cozy relationship where we had was only about 1% of 1% of global trade in, in bananas. Didn't matter. However, St. Lucia and Europe had to respond. And suddenly so new acronyms start to creep into our lexicon. Things like Europe Gap, ISO 9000, HACCP, just to mention the truth. SLBS was still a, a two-room office in the Ministry of Commerce, but it was evolving to meet the new challenges. Younger, brilliant minds started to filter through the office. Um, European Economic Partnership Agreement was in stride and meetings were coming fast and furious. Everybody had to try and keep up with all the foreign trade language and all that kind of stuff. Um, and along the way, that blurry, seemingly nebulous thing called quality management, with its myriad of pixels, began to coalesce into a sharper picture. That was because of a succession of St. Lucia's brightest professionals who led the, the St. Lucia Bureau Standards, and its employees and our partners. Partners like CrossQ, the EDF, FAO, Coupant, and the British Standards Institute, and many other local organizations. Along the way, there were stories of events, which in their own little way gave impetus to the, the journey. The two-room office became obsolete, and the then Minister of Commerce, the Honorable Philip J. Pierre, moved the organization to this premises. The legal and in, in institutional framework started to fall into place. The Standards Act of 19, 1990, and uh, it, it's evolving. It kept evolving into, into, to meet our new realities. The Metrology Act of 2000 followed suit. We used to have horrible fires at Christmas time. <laughs> City used to have meetings all over the country on evenings to meet the people of all communities in St. Lucia, to talk to them about government programs on entrepreneurship and so on. And one such meeting, at one such meeting in Grace Viewfort, a, a farmer asked a question. He asked, 
Mr. Lord, how many ounces in a pound? So I thought it was a trick question, you know? So I, I took a pause before I answer. But then I realized the place get definitely, you know, definitely silent and everybody looking at me. So I had to come up with an answer. So I said 16. He took a while before he answered. I, I said to get a little nervous now. Where, where are we going with this thing? And he said, Mr. Lord, okay, 16. How come when it gets to the marketing board in Castries, it is 13? <laughs> uh, I was stumped. I couldn't answer that one. We used to have, we have had persons who have become seriously ill because they couldn't read labels, because the labels were written in foreign languages. There was a gentleman in Labry. His name is Simeon, Mr. Simeon. Mr. Simeon was one of the first known farmers. When I say known, I mean he was on TV and stuff like that, producing CMOS and value-added products from CMOS. Aika started looking at him, FAO started looking at him. He started going on TV and stuff like that. He was making money. Mr. Simeon, Mr. Simeon was a happy man. Until one day, Mr. Simeon showed up at Sedo with a very solemn face. So I asked him, man, Mr. Simon, what's with the face, man? He says, my business mashup. I say, your business mashup? You mean there's no CMOS? He said, yeah, I have CMOS. I say, yeah, no ingredients? He said, yes, I have ingredients. So I said, well, what, what, what happened? He says he got a letter from his major supplier who bought 95% of his products, a foreign supplier, a foreign customer, 95% of his products sent him a letter saying, I can no longer import from you until I see a certificate, a HACCP certificate. I don't know what to tell Mr. Simeon. I sent him to, across, this, across the hallway to, 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 to um, the Bureau of Standards. But I've never, saw, I've never seen Mr. Simeon since. Today, we have very few fires because of faulty Christmas lights. That's a fact. Today, the farmers can trust the scales. That's a fact. Today, everybody can read the labels because it must be written in the, in the local language, English. Today, CMOS products are exported throughout the Caribbean, Europe, and North America. Today, 33 years later, our quality of life is better and improving thanks to the marvelous work done by a plethora of people, some brilliant people that pass through the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. And more importantly, the people we have here today, the workers we have here today. Most of them are not here, but I want you to let them know that I believe they are highly valued. And the work that they do is not just writing standards or going out and doing inspections and all that kind of thing. The bigger thing is improving the quality of life of St. Lucians. And during my tenure, I want them to remain focused on that. What we are doing is important, and this is for about improving the quality of life of St. Lucians into the next 33 years. Funny it is 33 years. Jesus Christ died at 33 years, right? And everything changed after that. I thank you. At this point in time, I would like to call our Madam P.S., the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Commerce, our governing agency, Mrs. Sophia Alfie Henry, to just give us a few words. Um, I'd like to begin by apologizing on behalf of the Honorable Minister, who is unable to be here today. She has an unavoidable engagement, and of course, um, convey her best wishes to everyone. Today, I am honored to represent the Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives, and Consumer Affairs to join in the commemoration of the 33rd anniversary of our national standards body, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, SLBS. 
And over the past three decades, the SLBS has played a vital role in shaping the standards and guidelines that have helped organizations in this country operate more effectively and efficiently. And when I look backward, I realize 33 years ago would have been in 1991. So although I wasn't here, I remember being at SJC Form 4 back then. And I'm happy there was an SLBS. I'm sure I benefited from all the standards back then as a student. And to see that the SLBS is still growing and is still stronger. Um, it must be noted, however, that we do not only set standards, and I say we because the SLBS falls under the Ministry of Commerce, but also abide by best practices to improve our overall operational capacity and efficiency as a ministry. As the Permanent Secretary within the Ministry of Commerce, I echo our minister in encouraging objective and thorough reviews of all our internal processes and procedures as we seek to maintain high standards in our service delivery. As most of you are probably aware, we are currently in the throes of receiving our second round of applications for our MSME loan grant facility, that's the ministry's flagship project. And that facility is aimed at providing post-COVID-19 pandemic relief to registered businesses. And although the learning curve was steep, we have sought to raise the standard yet again as we interface with the public in our quest to improve the quality of applications and applicants. Um, through targeted business training interventions held at more convenient times through online platforms, we are endeavoring to change the traditional informal manner in which MSMEs tend to operate. By improving the standards applied to their operations, we hope to increase their opportunities for funding, eligibility, improve market reach and access, and hopefully exportation. And um, one of the, well, an eligible use of the funds under that facility is for food safety standards, certification, and regulation. So it's very important that all agencies, our programs, our work programs are in sync um, to ensure that we have those standards and that quality of life, and it's you know across the board. Only recently, Export St. Lucia showcased some of the businesses which, upon having participated in a packaging and labeling project, were able to graduate from nondescript plastic packaging to attractively branded biodegradable boxes in keeping with international standards. I am especially pleased when I recall the growth of one such participant, that's Rego's Natural Spices, whose owner was able to not only transform her product packaging, but also modernize and revitalize her operational capacity within a relatively short space of time. And they actually showed the packaging, the before, after, and it was like night and day just the packaging and you apply standards to packaging product processes and you know a complete package having received the necessary support coupled with an already determined mindset and commitment to improving her own standards she knows the possibilities for business are limitless so the mindset is important we need to ensure that persons embrace appreciate the importance of standards. And then you have the support from agencies like the Senusha Bureau of Standards. And then what you have? Endless possibilities. We therefore applaud the timely interventions of organizations like the SLBS. It has been very instrumental in developing and promoting a quality culture in St. Lucia, underpinned by the development of the quality infrastructure of meteorology, compliance, certification, and standards development. The Ministry of Commerce is pleased that the Senusha Bureau of Standards has increased its participation in ISO technical committees, working towards ensuring the achievement of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to eliminating the technical barriers to trade 
aiding with the elimination of human trafficking, um, forced labor, and modern slavery. Through these conformity assessment services, the SLBS assures that the quality of goods and services produced are fit for the domestic, regional, and international markets. So as we look to the future, the Senator Bureau of Standards continues to innovate and adapt to the changing needs of society. It must be prepared to address new challenges that arise and to work collaboratively with industry, governments, and other stakeholders to find solutions. SLBS has been instrumental in the advancement of St. Lucia's efforts to develop the requisite standards and framework to support a sustainable cannabis industry based on adequate public health safeguards, and the director would have mentioned that earlier. The SLBS has engaged has engaged in work with the International Atomic Energy Agency, that's the IAEA, to establish protocols for safe and secure use of ionizing radiation. With the establishment of the Regulated Substances Authority, that's the RSA, one of the substances to be regulated by the RSA is ionizing radiation. And that legislation came into effect last year to establish the Regulated Substances Authority the board has been appointed and work will commence in short order. So there will be that great collaboration between the RSA and the Senate Bureau of Standards. The SLBS actually has a representative on the board of the RSA because of the critical role the SLBS has to play in monitoring and regulating the use and exposure to ionizing radiation. The annual celebration should not be a mere ritual, but an opportunity to recognize the importance of the work of the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, how it has contributed to transformative change, and how it continues to protect lives and livelihoods. It is also an opportunity for us to embrace and adhere to the, and adhere, sorry, to the standards set and not view them as burdens or hurdles. For this reason, I endorse this year's theme, making standards and quality our way of life, not SLBS's way of life or my way of life, but our way of life. So I'm hoping that the SLBS will um, be in the schools, um, collaborate more with the Ministry of Education, reach out to the youth, and for that to be reinforced in the home, in the workplace. And um, I was happy I saw on the program as, as the signing of an MOU with um, the youth economy. Because if you really want this to be our way of life, we must work with our young people and these agencies that are mobilizing our young people. I take this opportunity to recognize and thank both past and present council members, management and staff. We congratulate everyone on their efforts which have led to the success of this organization and look forward to further collaboration as we seek to achieve our national deliverables. In closing, let us always be mindful of our ability to lead by example and practice what we so often preach. We don't only set the standards, but by abide by the standards. I thank you. Listening to Mr. Lord, I felt that I should have shown him this presentation because I wanted you to take a brief walk down memory lane with me from 1991 when the St. Lucia, the Standards Act was signed and the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards was established. This is a birthday observation of the Bureau. And to commemorate this day, I'd like to give you, just bear with me, this brief presentation. I'll keep it short, I promise. I know there's a lot, there's, there's so much that I did not include in this. Passing of the Standards Act, 1990, allowing the creation of the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. At that time, 
the bureau was housed in the Ministry of Tourism on the third floor of the Heraldine Rock building with Henry Lubin as a director. Mr. Lubin. We also had the appointment of our first Standards Council, um, Standards Council with Mr. Cyril T. Matthews, appointed as the chairman. And also, St. Lucia became a member of the CARICOM Common Market at that time. That was in 1991 to 1997. St. Lucia then became a member of ISO in 1994. And the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards logo was unveiled and was designed by Leonard Esnard, who was a student of Sir Arthur Lewis at the time. I think this was for a competition. In, we had the appointment of the Weight and Measures Officer and, and Standards Development Officer, Mr. Julius James. National standardization begins with the establishment of the SLBS First Technical Committee and the first set of national standards were for foods and agricultural practices. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards then, St. Lucia, sorry, joined the WTO in 1995 and, we, and the SLBS was the, and became the official inquiry point. In 1996, St. Lucia became a member of SIM, which is the Inter-American Metrology System. In, and, as, and in that same year, we started our island-wide fuel dispenser calibration exercises. I'm sure Anthem was part of that. <laughs> in 1997, we had a new Standards Council, and Dr. Errol Reed was appointed chairman. This was when we started doing our legal metrology, and, and the staff was sent to to various workshops around the islands. Mr. Thomas Edmund, the late great Thomas Edmund, was appointed as acting director in 1999. In the year, oh, in 1990, um, also in 1999, SLBS began its package water assurance program. In the year 2000, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, was the minister responsible for standards matter and he was the first to declare our first set of mandatory standards or our technical regulations. Also in 2000, the Metrology Act was gazetted and the Bureau became our National Metrology Institutes. Shortly after that, in 2001, Ted Bert Feebles became our chairman, Mr. Feebles. <laughs> A new Standards Council was appointed, and Dr. Alison Plummer became our director. Also, the website, the first website was launched, www.slbs.org.lc. Then, through, the, through funding from the OPS, the Office of Private Sector Relations, the Bureau got funding to build its manpower undertaking training and procure the Metrology Department. St. Lucia then signed the World Trade Organization Code of Good Practice for the development, adoption, and implementation of standards in 2001. In 2002, Mr. Peter Foster became our new chairman and served from 2002 to 2005. In our first catalog was also published, our first standards catalog. We also be began issuing the verification stickers that would be used for the other gas pumps and supermarket shelves. The compulsory com standards compliance program also began and the first locally manufactured water qualifies for the certification and standards mark. These are other activities, that's the 9001 the push towards 9001 quality management standard. In 2004, SLBS undertakes the organization and program restructuring under the, the minister, Philip J. Pierre, 
we we moved into our new building which we are at right now that's i believe is a round of applause <laughs> In, <laughs> uh, these are just, this is the commencement of the time. 88 standards are adopted at that time. 88 at that time. We started the commencement of the tire inspection and we started monitoring Christmas lights as Mr. Lord alluded to earlier on. We also had a, a schools debate competition in St. Lucia. And I think we should, according to what Ms. Alfe was saying, we'll have to try and do that again. Uh, the Bureau also began work with other agencies, such as the Ministry of Tourism, in, and also began the push towards metrication. We, held, we had Dr. Alan Bryden, who was the head of ISO, visit St. Lucia. That's in 2006, we had the Tourism Regulations Program, Warehouse Inspections in 2006. Dr. Darius Gabriel appointed as Director of the SLBS. Um, St. Lucia in, in 2009, we began our electrical testing. We got our PAT testers and officers completed training in TTBS in electrical safety. This is Dr. Constantine. She was our director in 2010. This is the part tester. This is the, the device in which we use to do the electrical safety testing. Dr. Kabi Walcott, we'll also honor her. She was a director of the SLBS in 2012. Um, through the work of the Bureau, 228 products were deemed non-conforming, and that's when the conformity assessment really started gearing up. Um, in, by 2015 now, we, we had 165 national standards from 88 to 125, 165, and St. Lucia wins the prestigious OIML Award for Excellent Achievements in met Legal Metrology in Developing Countries. And we were the first two in, in our region. Eh? This is in 2017, we, we got approved accreditation to ISO 9001. That's from our certification department, Dr. Duvizo. In 2018, we, Mr. Vern Emanuel became our new director. And within that time, we, did, we launched the Commonwealth Standards Network Project with uh, assistance from the British Standards Institution and also uh, the Bureau got a new website. In 2018, the CARICOM Energy Efficiency Building Code was published. 2019, we started working towards the, our sustainable development goals where 350 SDG standards were adopted. So that was like the most standard adoption, I think, in on the in in the region or maybe even worldwide i'm sure that's worldwide <laughs> that's what i think we need to <laughs> also the ad hoc committee on cannabis was formed so in that's phase two and oh in in 2020 the metrology lab of the slbs received accreditation for iso 17025 In 2021, we were able to launch our online store in which you could purchase a standard and download it instantaneously. In 2022, our compliance department received accreditation in ISO 17020. I will have Mr. Reynolds give us a few remarks on that a little later. And that was under the 11th EDF, actually, the 11th e European Development Fund project, which has helped several of the regions in various 
projects. So we thank you them for that also. We're, coming, we're, we're wrapping up. I know it was a long journey. So in 2022, we were able to host the SIM AGM, which was the first time, I think, is that the first time, Anselm? First OACS to host the SIM annual general meeting. And it was a great event. In 2023, the first cannabis symposium was held in St. Lucia and a draft regulatory framework for cannabis was established. Was that? Oh, sorry. And in 2023, as a, um, in conjunction with the Regulatory Standards Authority, the, the regulation, Regulatory Administration Information System Silver Rise was set up and and the inventory of sources of radiation sources was carried out and in by 2023 now we have 629 standards in total thank um i know it was a long journey but thank you for your patience and taking this little walk down memory lane with me now i would like to invite Mr. Reynolds, to give us a, a few brief remarks on the European Development Fund. And just if you all didn't know, the European Union is current, was implemented its 11th European Development Fund in 2014 to 2020 with an aid budget of $30.5 billion for African, Caribbean, Pacific countries and overseas countries and territories covering both national and regional programs. Effectively programming the EDF is a major political policy and bureaucratic challenge involving, involving multiple stakeholders, namely the European Commission, the European External Action Service, 28 EU member states, the European Parliament, 74 governments from Africa, Caribbean, Pacific groups and states, and various domestic actors. So that's just a brief history. Mr. Reynolds will just give us a few words to thank the European Union, and then we will have Ms. Burnham, Ms. Latoya Burnham, give us a little more information on the EU project. Thank you. We started implementing um, ISO 17020 um, late, late 2020. And so we started with um, the, the project had a consultant, um, Ms. Um, Campbell from Jamaica. And so initially we did training um, um, so that we could familiarize ourselves with the standard and also training in terms of um, internal auditing. So that was very important. Um, throughout um, 2021, we, we did internal training against our quality management systems at, at documents, our work instructions, and some new documents that we had to, to develop so that we could conform to um, ISO 17020. Um, ISO 17020 is actually a standard um, that speaks to um, competence of inspection bodies like compliance. So all, all of this training for over a year um, helped to increase uh, the competence of our inspectors. As you know, competence would include um, um, education, experience, and also training. So we, we, we attempted to enhance our competence by concentrating on, on training. So we, we are now more confident in, in our inspectors that they have a, a very good idea or a clear idea of what they're supposed to do, and they are capable of following the work instructions. In, in October 2022, we, we became accredited to 17020. And the accreditation audit um, was done by JANAC, and Interestingly, they didn't find any non-conformities. They found some concerns, 
um, but no non-conformities. But our internal auditors um, found about 15 non-conformities, which, which was kind of good. <laughs> um, I, I challenged them initially to get 20 NCs, and if they were to get 20 NCs, I would buy lunch for everybody. <laughs> Um, but the, the, the large number of NCs gave us an opportunity to ad continue to address the, the gaps in our system. So by the time Jana came along, they didn't find any nonconformities. Um, the, the scope of our accreditation included a tire inspection. And I'm surprised Mr. Lloyd didn't mention any stories about tires. But um, it also included electrical appliance testing and label assessment. Um, initially, our, our program for electrical appliances, we, we would take up to a maximum of four samples. So our sampling plan was, was not based on um, a representative sample of the lot. So th there was some concern about the, the confidence of the results when you translate it to the lot. So you can imagine a thousand appliances and we only test four, and then you're going to translate the results to the rest of the, 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 the appliances that you didn't test. So it, it, there wasn't much, in terms of uncertainty, it was, it was really, really high. In order to, to conform um, to 17.020, we had to revise our sampling plan. So we decided to adopt um, an a international sampling plan, ISO 2859. And so that, that sampling plan um, would have allowed us, well, allowed us to, to take a representative sample. So now um, when, we, when we sample electrical appliances and we get results, we are confident that the results can be translated to the rest of the lot. Um, that, that posed some, some challenges for us. Um, um, based on the standard and based on the risk of electrical appliances, if one, if one out of the, the number of samples fail, we had to fail the entire lot. Because we do not know how many of the others will fail. So, so that was something new for us. And also, um, we had to take more samples. And so that posed a, a financial concern for the retailers and importers. Um, so um, they, 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 they made some adjustments to, to deal with the increase in, in paying in, in testing fees because we are now taking more samples. But we found a way to, um, to resolve that. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go too much into that. But the new sampling plan um, gave us confidence in our results that we can translate those results to the rest of the lot. Um, 17020 requires a management commitment. And so at times we were a little bit cheeky. <laughs> um, we, would, we would request a, um, equipment, um, PPEs and so on, and indicate to the director it was a, it, it, we, we needed it in order to become accredited or we needed it to maintain accreditation. And so it, it made it give us a little bit of leverage in having him approve the request. <laughs> um, be, be <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, 17020 requires that we pay close attention to our equipment. And so th that included calibrating in based on the manufacturer's recommendation, which was annually. And we also, um, we also doing in-house service checks to, to confirm that the, the testers we're using are within calibration. So uh, that also adds confidence to our results that we know the, the testers we are using uh, within calibration. Um, we, we, over the years, we have had meetings with, with manufacturers, mostly coming from, from Latin America. 
And one of the questions they, they commonly ask us when we discuss our program for electrical appliances is whether our lab is accredited. And I, I, we had to answer and kind of bow our heads each time that we are not accredited. And so now we feel, we feel bold and proud that we can say, yes, we are accredited, and this is our program. And so, um, so that's, that's a good thing. Congratulations uh, to the SLBS for 33 years. That's no small feat for any of our bureaus within the region, and I congratulate you on the commitment um, to reaching that milestone and for the various advancements as you would have seen um, in Mr. Busby's presentation as well as in the chairman's presentation before. What I am about to go through with you, uh, the chairman would have mentioned about the successes, uh, and this presentation actually highlights some of those successes of the SLBS and of St. Lucia in general in relation to our 11th European Development Fund Economic Partnership Agreement Technical Bars to Trade. We love acronyms in the region. <laughs> so it ends up being 11th EDF EPA TBT program. And I'm not going to say that, I'm just going to say 11th EDF program so that you know that we're talking about the technical barriers to trade component. Okay, so this particular program is 54 months long. We would have started around the end of 2019 with a launch occurring uh, at the start of 2020 with our various partners. And our various partners have been, um, well, still are the CrossQ Secretariat and the CrossQ Network. And what CrossQ, the CARICOM Regional Organization for Standards and Quality is, is a network of the 15 bureaus of standards within the region. The CrossQ Secretariat is based in Barbados, and what we do is pretty much pull all the resources together. We recognize that everybody is not at the same place. So what we're trying to do is kind of leverage what we have in the region to advance each other. Um, our other partners are the Dominican Republic's Institute for Quality, and our project managers are the PTB, which is the German National Metrology Institute. Um, CARIFORM serves as our oversight, um, because in addition to the 15 member states of CARICOM, we are also working with the Dominican Republic. Um, the intent really is to create avenues for easier access of regional goods and services to the European market. And that's why the economic partnership agreement really came about to kind of ease the way for us who are still developing um, to be able to reach markets, to be able to facilitate trade, to be able to um, also advance our position as far as trade is concerned. Now, in relation to the specific interventions that allow the TPD, sorry, the EPA agreement to succeed um, in the area of trade facilitation, we're tackling those technical barriers that prevent the smooth flow of trade, mainly from a quality standpoint. And that's why the partners that you see here are involved in this because we are looking essentially at quality. This particular, there would have been a program before this which would have been the 10th EDF which would have started in 2014. Um, so what the 11th EDF is trying to do is pretty much plug a lot of the gaps that we did not fill in the, f the first time around, or at least in the, in the last EDF program. So the process of implementation of this particular program invo involved uh, quite a few moving parts. Um, we were looking at closing the gaps in quality related value chain sectors and organizations. And I'm going to go through um, what St. Lucia would have done in relation to these key results. Um, we're looking at communicating the value of quality and we're also looking at strengthening the pillars of QI as they exist. Now in relation to closing the gaps, we would have looked um, at these quality related issues. Not all of them uh, 
pertain to St. Lucia, but I'm going to go through those that actually did. There is an initiative that was launched um, kind of under the 10th EDF that we expanded under this, and that is the National Quality Dialogues. Um, and what we wanted to do really was to find those sectors in our countries that need quality assistance. Find out what kind of quality assistance is needed and see how the national bureaus can solve those issues as they occur. In some countries, we would have had to do a pairing of um, both national quality uh, um, Sorry, uh, we would have had to do a mixture of national quality and regional quality um, solutions because we recognize that not all services are available at the national level. And if they are available at the regional level, there's no reason that you need to go to Europe, the US, or, or elsewise. The focus of the dialogues were decided by the member states. Um, and it was based pretty much on national priority sectors. In the case of St. Lucia, you chose tourism. And that dialogue would have occurred from the 21st to the 23rd of July in 2021. That collaboration would have been Cross-Q, the 11th EDF, um, the SLBS, of course, as the host, as well as the Ministry of Tourism here in, in St. Lucia. That dialogue was aimed at increasing participants' awareness of the importance of quality in, an, in enhancing competitiveness of businesses and identifying the quality issues that occur in the sector, especially as a lot of member states at that point in time were being hard, hard hit by the pandemic because we recognize that a lot of us rely on tourism. So the focus on tourism was good for St. Lucia because then you could look at what the issues were. Um, it also focused on increasing participants' understanding of the role of quality infrastructure in enhancing the development of the tourism sector. And when we talk about um, quality infrastructure, we're talking about the implementation of standards. We're talking, um, as Mr. Reynolds would have just mentioned, about the inspection. We're talking about the certification. We're talking about the awareness raising, the measurement systems, all of those systems that play a role in deciding how much and how far you can go in terms of advancing trade um, from a quality standpoint. We brought those uh, discussions to the tourism sector. Um, the guidance of St. Lucia's NQA, um, the director would have spoken before about your national quality policy and what your national quality policy is trying to do. This would have helped in terms of advancing that. Now, the focus of the dialogue was mainly on engaging in relation to alternative accommodations, sites, attractions, and tourism transport. The second area that um, would have impacted St. Lucia or St. Lucia would have been um, a part of would have been your certification, your accreditation of your um, certification and compliance department. And that was one of the big successes across the region, not just for St. Lucia. Um, this was an example of trying to close the gap so that at the national level, there is access to reliable results, especially in relation to inspection. We recognize that across the region, there is a heavy demand now for accredited services. And what that means is that people are saying to us, businesses are saying to us at the regional level, we need for our goods when they get somewhere else to be trusted. Um, we need for the services within the region to do what they need to do to be able to verify that there is quality in what we produce, whether it is within our professionals um, through certification or whether it is um, through our goods. The accreditation of the SLBS's department, which occurred in October 2022, with the lab receiving international recognition and again, congratulations to the hardworking staff because we know at the regional level what has to go in, in terms of commitment, in terms of time, in terms of dedication, in terms of long man hours in order for 
any organization or any department to receive international accreditation. And I'm going to encourage the SLBS to keep going to make sure that they keep this accreditation as they move forward. The support of the 11th EDF program within this would have been in providing that technical assistance as well as funding for the audits, the evaluations, those kinds of elements to be able to assist St. Lucia in general because this is a success not just for the SLBS. This is a regional success for St. Lucia and the rest of us. Training courses. Uh, in terms of closing gaps, because this is another um, initiative that would have pushed us closer to our key results of closing gaps. We recognize coming out of the 10th again that there was a need for education and awareness raising. Um, our technical committees, because each of the pillars of QA have a regional technical committee um, for standards, for metrology, for conformity assessment, um, et cetera, there are technical committees at the regional level. And we hear, based on what is happening at the national level, what your needs are in terms of education. So we try to fill that by providing free training courses um, at the regional level. The quality for organizational effectiveness and sustainability e-learning program was developed and launched in January of this year, actually. The target audiences primarily were intended initially to be quality institutions because those were the individuals that were saying to us, we need some additional training. Um, but as we went through the process of developing the courses, we realized that there was actually a wider market. And when we launched the courses, there was such a flood of applications that at currently we have um, over 530 heading to 600 individuals who are actually in, in enrolled in our courses and our courses stretch from introduction to quality infrastructure there is a course on standards development essentials there is a course on metrology fundamentals of metrology there is auditing for quality effectiveness and there is quality infrastructure marketing communications which is aimed specifically at QA institutions and their marketing or communications departments but interestingly enough in that again has also been taken up by businesses, um, sales clerks we've seen taking that course, persons uh, within our region and even extra regionally we've had tremendous uptake of our free e-learning courses so I encourage you to go to um, our website and uh, enroll in our courses. The End date is the last day of May. That is when the courses will close for this year. Um, sorry, for this first cohort. And we are looking at, based on the feedback that we are getting to uh, revamp and improve what we currently have so that we can have a second cohort um, of enrollment before the end of the year. And I must say um, on the St. Lucia front, we've also seen quite a bit of enrollment from the SLBS, but also from businesses. Um, we've seen entrepreneurs and small businesses actually taking up our courses. In addition to the quality infrastructure, um, the introduction to quality infrastructure, which is our most, um, our most popular course so far, um, there is also the auditing for quality effectiveness, which is our second most popular course. And if you complete all five courses within this suite, you get an executive certificate in um, the QOES program. And in St. Lucia, we actually do have one person with the executive certificate, and that's Miss Cheyenne Clovis of the SLBS. <laughs> So, so congratulations, Cheyenne. I was really, really pleased to see um, Cheyenne's name um, among some of the early recipients of, of that um, certificate. 
So we're moving on to the strengthening of the QI pillars. Uh, as I would have mentioned, in each of the QI areas, there is a regional committee. Um, and the participants on that regional committee are drawn from um, the member states. And what the EDF has been trained to do is to strengthen those technical committees and the ability of those technical committees because essentially they're cons conformed and composed of technical officers from the national level. So we would have had meetings and trainings and the trainings have been very important um, to to this project because, uh, again, our officers have been saying to us, we need to advance what we do in order to facilitate the work that needs to happen at the, at the national level. So there would have been meetings of the Technical Management Committee, the CARAMET Committee, which looks at uh, measurement. There would have been the mention earlier of the SIM uh, meeting that would have been held here, and that would have also been funded and facilitated by the EDF. There is the CCA program, which is the Caribbean Cooperation for Accreditation, and that's our, our technical committee that's actually comprised of both, both NSBs, which are our bureaus, as well as businesses who are in the, in the, in the business of um, conformity assessment. And then there is our MIC committee, which deals with marketing and communication, and our TIE committee, which looks at technical bars to trade agreements and the issues that surround that. So in particular, our um, St. Lucia would have served as host for both the TMC, which is our standards committee, as well as um, the same technical um, group in the past. And finally, our last key result was looking at communicating the value of quality. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I came down to St. Lucia to talk to you um, and to explain what the project has been doing because we recognize that a lot happens in, in our countries that we don't necessarily talk about and that we don't necessarily know about. So in relation to this um, particular awareness aspect, we would have had um, an 18 month regional podcast that would have been launched in July of what year is this? 2024? It would have been launched. <laughs> yeah, the year is flying. It would have been launched in 2022. Um, and what that podcast did um, was to bring quality infrastructure alive for 30 minutes on YouTube as well as Spotify. Um, we would have said to, and it was an initiative of our Marketing Information Knowledge Management and Education Committee, the MIC. Again, we love our acronyms. Um, <laughs> Mr. Busby is one of our representatives as well as Cheyenne on our um, my committee. And we would have said to the member states, how can we bring um, quality infrastructure as happens at our regional level? Because we hear a lot and we see a lot about what happens at the international level, but that necessarily does not mean that the same thing, the exact same thing is what happens at the national level within our member states because we are at different development states. Um, but we also want to say to the world, quality is happening here as well. So our member states were able to pull together some really interesting dis discussions. And if you go to the um, Cross Q YouTube page, you'll see all of the videos there already packaged for you to enjoy. Um, St. Lucia would have focused at one point on um, the cannabis discussion, and that was actually one of our most popular podcasts. Um, so again, congratulations to St. Lucia on that. Uh, in this regard, we would have also had um, what we call our Q Factor Digest. And what that is, is a publication that we would have um, put together and published uh, three times a year. Um, we're down to two times a year now. Um, and because it's a digest, what it was was 
an opportunity for the member states to tell us about what is happening at the national level. Again, saying the SLBS would have contributed a lot of articles to that, would have contributed videos to that, would have contributed um, documents that the public can download. And because it's a digest, we wanted it to be as interactive and as educational as we could make it. So it's not just your regular newsletter. It's a newsletter that has interactive elements. So there are documents that you can download that are of interest um, in terms of reading. There are video links that you can go to to see exactly what is happening um, at the national level. Um, and there would have been audio clips, there would have been photographs, um, there would have been um, collages of events as they were occurring in our member states because we want as much as possible to sing the tune of what is happening at the national level. And finally, there would have been our sensitization um, sessions. Um, within the CARE forum, we said to each member state, because coming out of the 10th again, we would have had a discussion, a regional discussion about what are some of the challenges that we recognize. And sometimes we take for granted that our media professionals um, and our public in general knows what um, bureaus of standards do. Um, and that is not always the case. They have a vague idea, but sometimes there is a little confusion or a little mix up in terms of the mandate, for example, of a national bureau versus the commerce um, department if there is a separation in terms of where the bureau falls in its mandate. So we wanted to make that clear at the national level. We also wanted to open an avenue for discussion directly between the NSBs and the media. So for example, if they have questions, they know who to address those questions to. They have a partner in the bureau that they can call up and say, hey, there's this thing happening. Give us some comment. Explain to us what the situation really is so that you don't necessarily have um, stories out there without um, uh, a viewpoint or an explanation um, as to what is truly happening. So we would have had across our 16 member states, um, Cariform states, uh, St. Lucia being the last one, we would have had discussions about quality infrastructure, what quality infrastructure is, and also um, what is happening in relation to the 11th EDF and its contribution to development or assisting the Bureau at the national level, and what you guys um, at the national level would have got out of this program. So that is pretty much um, the 11th EDF and St. Lucia's benefits in a nutshell. I thank you for your interest um, this morning. So as you all know, our former chairman passed away while he was still in office. That's Mr. Thomas Edmund. So we would like to honor his memory. We have Ms. Henville who will just give a few words to his tribute. This is a tribute by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards in recognition of Mr. Thomas Edmund, our late chairman, Standards Council. Today, we reflect on the working relationship that we shared with Mr. Thomas Edmund as chairman of the SLBS. Mr. Thomas Edmund joined the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, the SLBS, as its first standard development officer in 1993 and served as acting director of SLBS from 1999 to the year 2000. Mr. Edmund served as chairman of the Standards Council from 2016 until his untimely passing on 21st July, 2023. During his tenure as chair, he guided the SLBS through a period of significant progress in the fulfillment of its mandate. And today, we highlight a few of the notable achievements that he accomplished. Certification to ISO 9001 in 2017 and two subsequent recertifications in 2020 and 2023. Accreditation to ISO 17025 for the SLBS Metrology Department, 
first in the OECS. Accreditation to ISO 17020 for SLBS Compliance Department. Compliance Department, sorry. Implementation of the Commonwealth Standards Network Project with the outputs of the National Quality Policy, a 150% increase in the number of national standards. Consultancy services to CARICOM in the completion of the study on the interchangeability of plantation white and refined white sugar as part of the evidence-based resolution of a technical point in the regional standards development process. An expert in food safety and environmental management. Mr. Edmund was a brilliant scientist and a master at building consensus who skillfully charted the technical and governance aspects of the Standards Council with clarity of purpose and humility, while effectively ensuring evidence-based decision-making, which resulted in an organization which is fit for purpose. We will miss his wise counsel, as he was a dependable chairman who placed his duty to country above self for which we will be eternally grateful. We are heartened that we were able to communicate our appreciation for him during the SLBS's 32nd anniversary celebrations in April 2023, not knowing that it would be his ultimate address to us in such a gathering. I thank you.
the strength to carry on and you push your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone look inside you and be strong and you finally see the truth that a hero lies in you that a hero lies in you So the next item on our agenda will be a sign, will be a recert, the recertification of Blue Waters. As you all know, in the slide, you all saw that part of the one of the pro programs of the Bureau was the quality assurance for our waters. And Blue Waters has been one of our consistent bearers of the standards mark so that the water is actually on the mark is on the water. We have in our presence Miss Laura Jordan, who is the quality assurance manager at Blue Waters. We would like you to join us. I think it was very important that we recognize a company that has shown consistent dedication to implementing standards. The Blue Water St. Lucia Limited manufacturers of Blue Water's purified water and Paradise Water purified water have again completed a rigorous audit against the requirements of two standards, specification for packaged water and the code of hygienic practice for the collecting, processing, and marketing of packaged water to be relicensed to the St. Lucia standard mark. The company has from 2016 for the ninth consecutive year. And I think they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> yes. From 2016, they have been seeking certification to demonstrate a commitment to comply with all requirements designated for the product in the St. Lucian market. This is an extraordinary commitment to advancing an agenda to making quality a core value, not just to the company, but also a recognition to the value of providing evidence of compliance to standards to their customers. So you will see the standard mark on their product. Some of these requirements include process controls for the product and material tracking, document control, food safety management, including programs for pest control, sanitation, employee hygiene, um, documentation of hazards, and methods to control those hazards as well. So, in recognition of this achievement, the Senusha Bureau Standard today signs the licensing agreement and presents the licensing certificates to Blue Water Senusha for carrying the standard mark on their two brands of water. Congratulations, Blue Waters. And I call on the director, Mr. Vinny Manuel, to present the certificates. We have two representatives. We have Ms. Laura, Mrs. Laura Jordan, and we have Mr. Helmet Munoz, who is the plant manager with us today. On behalf of Blue Water St. Lucia Limited, I would like to thank the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards for the opportunity to share in this momentous occasion in celebrating its 33rd anniversary. Blue Water St. Lucia Limited has been working closely with the Bureau of Standards for the past 10 years. During this time, 
we have been fortunate in obtaining third-party verification for our purified bottled water through the participation of the Bureau's annual certification program for food manufacturers, which covers all aspects of standardization. Proof of this verification is in the presence of the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards mark, which is on all of our products' labels. The mark symbolizes our company's commitment to ensuring that we serve our customers with quality, functional, and great tasting beverages. This means that we strive to consistently meet our consumers' expectations through compliance with regional and national standards with each bottle of water that we process. So this day marks another year for Blue Water St. Lucia to engage in the certification program as we once again proudly bear the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards mark for all our locally produced brands of purified bottled water. To our organization, this mark represents the hard work and dedication of our qualified members of staff in implementing a sound quality management system and food safety program which extends to all areas to include our supply chain, manufacturing, and distribution departments. It therefore means that the procurement and use of our raw materials, our HACCP and training programs, storage and extensive laboratory testing, both internally and externally, are closely monitored by the Bureau of Standards well-trained staff of the certification department. So in closing, I would like to encourage all local manufacturers to incorporate this essential service provided by the Bureau into their operational systems to enable their organizations to benefit from the level of compliance that it offers. In this way, we can offer our consumers the confidence that they seek when purchasing local products. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jordan, and thank you, Blue Waters, for being a consistent partner with our standards, Mark, and our quality assurance program. And I think we deserve another round of applause, please. <laughs> now, as we, as we spoke about partners, also, did I acknowledge Mr. Hubert James? I did not acknowledge Mr. Hubert James, who's been on our standards council. <laughs> For quite a while, too. <laughs> um, as we spoke about partners, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards is embarking on a new partnership. This now will be with the Youth Economy, um, Youth Economy Agency. SLBS and, and Ye will be doing the signing of an MOU at a subsequent event.
when I 